Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. In a tweet, on November 10, Chainlink Labs presented its proof of reserve product as a response to potential trust issues in the cryptocurrency exchange market. Its proof of reserve, POR, product is useful for verifying centralized exchange asset reserves, off-chain bank account balances, cross-chain collateral, real-world asset reserves, and much more, according to the company. In a tweet by Chainlink Labs on November 10 stated, Hashtag crypto is at a crossroads point too. Will crypto continue to repeat the mistakes of the traditional black box financial industry? Or will a better system emerge? A better system is possible, and proof of reserve is one way hashtag Chainlink is providing the transparency that users demand. End cut. Using the proof of reserve technique, users can instantly check the reserves of crypto exchanges. Proof of reserve has already been implemented by some exchanges. Take a look at the rest of the thread of the Chainlink tweet, the link will be in the description, for a better visual and comprehension of the POR system. The product utilizes Chainlink nodes connected to a proof-of-reserve smart contract and Chainlink nodes connected to the exchange's API and vault addresses. Any other account on the network may query the contract to ascertain whether the exchange's crypto assets are equal to its liabilities. Moving on to the corroded crypto exchange FTX. FTX users are now able to withdraw money from the exchange, but only after giving arbitrageurs 80% of the value of their portfolio. The defunct cryptocurrency exchange declared today that it had reached a deal with the Tron blockchain that would permit owners of TRX to withdraw their tokens from FTX. After rumors of Tron's involvement, the official announcement caused the price of the tokens to soar on the exchange. The tweet by FTX official stated, FTX announcement regarding the Tron credit facility. We are pleased to announce that we have reached an agreement with Tron to establish a special facility to allow holders of TRX, BTT, JST, Sun, and HT to swap assets from FTX 1:1 to external wallets. The thread continues in the comments. This functionality will be enabled at 18:30 Universal Time Coordinated, November 10, 2022. The exact capacity of the Tron token facility will be determined weekly, and future injections will occur at 1400 hours Universal Time Coordinated. The amount to be deposited will depend on a number of factors such as withdrawal demand and funding capacity to be provided by Tron. By providing a set schedule of the amount of tokens to be introduced into the market and the corresponding time, our goal is to provide more clarity to the market allowing users to make better informed decisions. Follow the tweet in the description to read more about the FTX plan to return at least a portion of the money to its customers. And of course more news on FTX. Tom Emmer, the recently re-elected Republican lawmaker representing Minnesota's 6th District in the United States House of Representatives, has alleged Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler had been helping FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried to gain a regulatory monopoly through the crypto firm. The Republican lawmaker claimed that his team was investigating the SEC chair's alleged association with Bankman-Fried and FTX. Emmer's tweets on November 10 read, Interesting. At Gary Gensler. Runs to the media while reports to my office allege he was helping SBF and FTX work on legal loopholes to obtain a regulatory monopoly. We're looking into this. This tweet was a response to Gary Gensler's tweet where he stated, I'll be joining at Andrew Sorkin on at Squawk CNBC at 8 a.m. Eastern Time to discuss recent developments in the crypto markets. Gary Gensler stated before the Emmer's tweet on CNBC Squawk Box. When you mix together a bunch of customer money, non-disclosure, and leverage, borrowing against it, investors get hurt. Super sketchy that Gensler guy. But moving on to SEC investigating Binance and Coinbase. In an article on the Wall Street Journal stated, SEC and the Justice Department, DOJ, are investigating FTX, a cryptocurrency exchange. While the Justice Department prosecutes criminal actions, the SEC enforces civil investor protection laws. Some of the assets featured on the platform and the financing product offered by FTX could be securities, and as such, under U.S. law, they need to have been registered with the SEC prior to being marketed to investors. If so, the company's handling of client money may also be against rules governing American exchanges. The Securities and Exchange Commission's chairman, Gary Gensler, has repeatedly demanded that trading platforms like FTX register with the organization and adhere by the same regulations that apply to traditional stock exchanges while pledging to launch enforcement actions. The SEC has initiated an investigation into the FTX platform as a result, and is also investigating into Coinbase Global and Binance. 
On to the U.S. Attorney's historic announcement, $3.36 billion cryptocurrency seizure and conviction. But what did they do with the money? The Department of Justice, DOJ, declared that it has taken possession of a little over 50,676.17 BTC, worth nearly $1 billion at the current exchange rate, from James Zhong, a Bitcoin dealer, in November 2021. Zhong. He entered a guilty plea last week, on November 4, 2022, to one count of wire fraud. While accurate at the time of the enforcement action, the DOJ's reporting of the confiscation as a $3.36 billion haul ignores the fact that Bitcoin is currently down 69% from its all-time high. The U.S. government has already purchased a minimum of 214,046 BTC, or nearly $4.43 billion, over the course of the previous two years, totaling at least 163,370 BTC. The DOJ seized 69,370 BTC, worth more than $1.4 billion now, from a person they identified as Person X in November 2020. This was the fourth-largest Bitcoin address on the network. The organization also seized over 94,000 BTC from Heather Razalkin Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein after alleging that the couple planned to launder money from the historic 2016 breach of the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex. Usually, the U.S. government sells its Bitcoin assets in open auctions through the U.S. Marshals Service. The BTC that the DOJ confiscated is expected to be made available to the public in a similar manner. So there you have it. The U.S. government is selling the confiscated Bitcoin for a fraction of the price. At a Solana breakpoint conference in Lisbon, which took place November 4 to the 7th, Helium and Solana announced. Helium will power Solana Labs' Web3 phone saga, promoting decentralized ledger technology, DLT. Helium and Solana Labs announced a mobile carrier collaboration for Saga at the Lisbon Solana Breakpoint Conference. Helium, a crypto-based wireless network, previously voted to join Solana. Not only will this partnership ultimately drive usage to the Helium network, but Saga customers who sign up for Helium Mobile will be able to have a seamless and integrated user experience and could earn crypto rewards for using their cell service, said Boris Rinsky, head of Nova Labs and Helium project creator. Helium rewards 5G node users with digital assets for providing coverage. Over 6,500 antennas support 5G radios on the 5G network, which can increase. Co-founder of Solana Anatoly Yakovenko at TechCrunch's annual global startup conference stated, They're built around a rent-seeking model where all the content is owned by the creator and you as a user rent it. When you buy a video from Amazon, you don't own it, everyone realizes that you don't own it. Next we will play clips from the Elon Musk interview with Robin Wheeler on advertising and the future of Twitter, which went live on November 9th. Well, I want to kick off Elon with a question. Just, you know, it's been, what, 14 days almost. Um, what has been your biggest learning in that time? Well, I think <clears throat> the, the, my, the biggest um, thing that I've come to learn is that there's tremendous potential uh, that's untapped uh, for Twitter um, and that... Um, there are a lot of really talented people at Twitter that uh, I think can take the company in a, uh, a lot of interesting new directions. Uh, we um, we really want to uh, be, as I've mentioned before publicly, the, the sort of the digital town square uh, where uh, that is as inclusive as possible. Meaning, like the as many of people you know, like like can we get eighty percent of of humanity on on the on Twitter. Um, and Tolkien, and and maybe uh, in, in, in ideally in a sort of positive way, um, can we exchange uh, instead of having violence, have words, and, and and maybe once in a while people change their minds. Um, you know, the, the overarching goal here is like, how can we make Twitter a force for good um, for civilization? Um, and um, you know, we'll just we'll just keep um, changing and adapting until that that is what that is the outcome achieved. Um, you know, people should look back on Twitter or consider Twitter uh, to be a good thing in the world. Um, like I said, something that for the civilization um, that you're glad that it exists. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, as I said in some of my tweets, I think we, we want to be, just be in, in vigorous pursuit of uh of the truth like to be somewhat in the business of truth um now truth can be sometimes a nebulous concept but we can certainly aspire 
uh, to, towards it. And I think even if we can't get there completely, at least trying our hardest to get there is um, worth it is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, so, you know, this, this is a, a big part of why it, I think it's important to try to get as many people as possible verified. Um, so, and then I want to kind of explain a bit about the sort of blue check mark verification thing and, and why I think it is so important, in fact, necessary. Um, so, that, because I, I'm struggling with the question of how do you deal with um, millions of bots and, and sort of troll farms, um, in, including malicious actions by state actors. Um, there's, there's hundreds of millions of, of fake accounts that are created every year at Twitter. Most of them are blocked, but not all of them. Um, the, the, the issue is that creating a fake account um, is, is just extremely cheap. It's, it maybe is a, t a tenth of a penny or just some very small amount of money. Um, by sort of charging $8 a month, um, it raises the cost of a, a bot or troll by somewhere between 1000 and $10,000. Um, but but <clears throat> there's, a, there's, there's, a, an, there's a detail here which I think is appreciated by by very few people, but that's also but that's also very important. Which is, it's not just the money because you could say, well, wouldn't a state actor have eight million dollars a day to create a million fake accounts? Well, yes, they've got the budget, but here's the problem: they don't they don't have a million credit cards, and they don't have a million phones. That's the that's the actual kicker. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Thank you for watching if you made it all the way through. Stay tuned we are an active admin. Please like, comment, and subscribe, never be afraid to voice your opinion. Tell us in the comments what you think, and give us some suggestions on what kind of content you'd like us to deep dive into. Until next time, good day, good night, and goodbye.